long has the Brewers been around? They actually started a long time ago as a minor league team. They were the Seattle Collins in 69 and then moved to Milwaukee. Yeah. Uh, That makes sense is the Utah Jazz or the New Orleans Jazz. Which makes sense. Moved New to New Jazz. Orleans. And moved to Utah and saved the Jazz. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Makes, there's no Jazz in Utah. That makes no sense. Utah, sure. Utah, 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 Utah skiers. <laughs> Alright. Um, I mean, what, what is Congress, first of all? What do you mean by Congress? Not be judicial. No. There's two things in Congress. What are they? Oh. What's Congress made up of? You don't need your notes for that. You need your notes. You got notes. How many people are in the Senate? How many, how many from each state? Two. How many is it in the Senate? One, two, three, one, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, all right, I'm going to play you a clip. Yeah, if you see it, I was here. This is a great movie. What? A great movie. Oh, Tragedy, but they set it in the south in the 30s. And it's, it's a pretty good show. Yeah, well, what's this? Uh, a brother war uh, Oh, it has some people in there right now. Yeah. Okay, so you gotta pay for it on everything. Uh, it's it's always on TV all the time. I bet you can find a slice. It's on TV all the time. Don't be poor. Here's an exception. that old brother or hard time? It's on, I mean, it's on TV almost every day. I don't have TV. Uh, you have TV. I have streaming. How do you watch the sports and the news? And I know. Hulu. Yeah. I have iFunny. <laughs> What's that? I have iFunny. No, it's not on Netflix. Control. You just get like. Well, so it's like 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 I don't see no way this That part? I'm 
so disappointed in What What I word did he say there that's tied in with this piece of paper? Movie day. What word did he say there? It says two. Constituents. Constituents, yeah. Okay? And he's, this guy's running for governor. And he says, is you is or is you ain't my constituency. What that means is, a constituent is somebody represented by somebody in office. Just looking at me like a constituent is somebody represented by somebody in office. Right? Somebody, President, we are all Joe Biden's constituents. Every single one of us. Right? Somebody in office. It, it doesn't mean you support them, that you mean you like them, that you mean you voted for them. That's a horrible way to go through life, though. Last one. What is it? Yeah, Your shirt. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> so that's a constituent. We are all, I used to say Kay Granger. I think she's still a representative. I'm not sure right now. All right. Um, today, Representatives represent between 600,000 and 700,000 people in their district. What would be difficult about being a representative? I mean, 700,000 people happy. You got, is it possible to represent 700,000 people? No, that's tough. You gotta, you gotta do work really hard because you're gonna tick off half the people and you're gonna kind of make some people happy and. And you just, it's hard to do that. Let's say you're looking at a bill. You are a congressman. You're looking at a bill. What are some things that are going to influence or some things you're going to think about as you make your decision how you have a vote on that? Isn't that going to pop up in your head? How will this affect my constituents? You're going to think about your constituents. <laughs> to Congress up there. In Congress, there is a majority leader in the House and the Senate, and there is a minority leader in the House and the Senate. These people's jobs, we've talked about this, these people's jobs is to keep the cows in the pasture. That? The Republicans are all trying to keep the Republicans voting the same way, and the Democrats are going to keep the Democrats voting the same way. They're going to try to. What's something else that's going to influence you now? Influence your decision. What would try to influence your vote? Uh, the people who are in the party. party. Yeah. Your party. Something else that's very close to you would influence you. Who's the closest person in the world to you? Closer than family. Yourself. Your your personal feelings and ideas are going to influence your vote. Your feelings, your personal thoughts. What you think is right and wrong. 
And we'll put, the last thing we're going to put is something I would hope they would think about, but I don't know that they do very much. The country. And maybe the future. Y'all agree that's important? Y'all agree they probably don't think about it very much? Yep. Now I put stars by two of those, and I didn't put stars by the other two. Why would I put stars by those two? Because that's what Peter Graham meant. What's that? That's what they care about. Why do they care about these the most? They get votes. This determines whether I get I stay in office or not. My own personal feelings, does that determine me staying in office or not? No. If I make a decision based on the best for the country and the best for the future, if I do what's best for the future, is that going to get me reelected? If we go to the store, I want something, and I say no, I'm not winning the next all. He ain't voting for me. He's mad. He wants to go. He'll go ask mom. And she says, she says no, he wants a different, different candidate. He doesn't like the candidate. Now, if my feelings are constantly going against these two things, then I'm wrong as well. The story of Joe Biden, not Joe Biden, Joe Lieberman. <laughs> Joe Lieberman was a Democrat for 25, 30 years. Famous Democratic senator from Vermont. And in 2000, he was Al Gore's vice presidential candidate. Now, if you are a politician and you are running for vice president, Successful. Okay. You know, not anymore. Yes. If you're you're a politician, I'm just, yeah, if you're run, even if you lose, if you're running for vice president, you really you've made it. That, that get big. The only thing bigger than that is the guy you're running with, you're like right there. So I really liked Joe Lieberman because he was thoughtful, he was intelligent, he wasn't in your face. He allowed people to talk. He listened to other ideas. I really, really liked They lost the election. In 2004, he's running for senator again. In Vermont. He's already had it? Oh, he's had it for 20 years. Does he have a problem? On TV. This is after September 11th. He's always going on TV and saying things like, I support our president, I support the troops. And the Democratic Party told him, shut up. You're not going to say that anymore. And he said, I can't not say that. It's what I believe, it's what I stand for. I'm going to continue to say it. And what happens all that? I support the troops, I support our president. Democratic Party ran someone against him in the primary election. So I don't want to call him anyone else. If you're Doc or Rachel or both Republicans, you've got to have a primary election to get down to the, just the playoffs. You can't have four people running for one office. You have to narrow it down to one Democrat and one Republican. That's a primary election. So in the primary, the Democratic primary, he's never run against anybody in like 20 years. Democratic Party funded and supported another person like this, and he lost the Democratic primary election. In the general election, he ran as an independent, and he won. The Democratic Party tried to get rid of him because he was going against the Democratic Party. Why were they saying that he can't say that? Because politically, they were against the president he was living, and you can't support a Republican president and his agenda. You have to be against that. Now, they again, were against going to war. It'd be them. like it'd be like a Republican senator today going on TV and saying, "I support Joe Biden. I support his his whatever." Republican Party's going to stop saying that. You can't do that. But 
the Democratic Party was against President Bush going to war with Iraq. It's got to be none of that. Hated President Bush. They said we're going to Iraq. We went in there. Syria gas is three, maybe four, I don't know. That's just me. Uh, but he ran and won, and then all the media just ran to him. is spreading those reps among the states. Spreading those reps among the states. Giving each state their portion of that 435. Does that have what do we need to know in order to do that? Population. So we need to know the population. When do we know the population? After the census. Usually. We have to have the census first. Census gives us the population. Divide the U.S. population by 435. That gives us the number that each representative is going to represent. Does that make sense? That number ends up being be somewhere between 600,000 and 700,000. After we know the number, what do we do now? We look at the state populations and figure out, okay, here's how many states can we get. After we do that, then you can draw the district. So, we need to know this first, this second, and then figure out how many per state. That's third. Then you can draw the districts. You can't cut the pie until you figure out how many people's coming for Thanksgiving. You can't even start cooking pies to figure out how many people's coming for Thanksgiving. Now, also in there, I want you to throw in gerrymandering. We can learn about this a lot of them. Yeah, they Yeah. So, what I do is draw up that you get favored one of the points. Yes. Gerrymandering is drawing the districts. Now, what's weird, what's difficult about drawing these districts? 
they can't be the same size and you have to get as close to the same number in each district as you can so they look weird. Who draws the districts? State legislatures. And they are controlled by Republicans and Democrats. By right now, Texas is controlled by Republicans. Gerrymandering is when you draw the districts to give one group an advantage. What are Republicans going to do? They're going to try to make sure most of the districts have a Republican majority. That's the voting records, they'll be able to tell. Okay, we draw the district like this, they're going to have 62%. Gonna hear gerrymandering this spring. You're gonna hear Republicans are cheating, Republicans are gerrymandering, and there'll be a three judge panel. This summer there'll be a three judge panel where you draw the districts. Except for the lawsuits. Except for Republicans cheating to get the votes. When the Democrats are in charge, what will the Democrats do? Well, gerrymandering gives the Democrats an advantage. And then there'll be a three judge panel that I don't like. When is this being done? We're doing it right now. Because this is 2021. 2020 was the census. 2021, they redo the districts. 2022 is the first election with the new districts. So all this is taking place right now. That's why this spring you're going to hear gerrymandering and three judge panel. There was a guy in 2012. His name was Johnson or Johnson. He was a representative from Dallas for 20 years. And after they redrew the districts, he didn't live in his district anymore. He didn't move, but the district lines changed. And he had to choose, do I move to my old district or do I stay in this new district? And he had to stay in his house and he lost it. He was a Democrat. So reapportionment kind of makes sense. Why, why does it have to be done before the redistricting? Why, why do you have to wait for the redistricting before you do the reapportionment? Because you need to know how many places you have to go. You need to know the numbers. Okay. You need to know how many each state's going to get. Now, I might fix that. How many members are in the house? There are 435. And in the house, those are 435 voting members from the states. They have two year terms. Which means all 435 run for office every two years. Nancy Pelosi, Speaker of the House. Um, Steny Teachers, Hoyer. please post attendance. Thank you. Steny Hoyer, Steny Hoyer, the Majority Leader, has to run for office next year. Yeah, you did at the beginning of the month. Now there are non-voting members in the house. Why would America allow voters? Or why, would, why would we have representatives from areas of the country of the country that are not states? Where where would areas of the country be that are not states? Washington D.C. Islands and American Samoa. I don't, I don't care that you ever know where they are, but we have territories that aren't states. They're American citizens. They vote. They vote people. They elect people to go to Congress and discuss things. They don't get to vote because they're not states. But they get to discuss things because they're American citizens. There are 100 senators. Mayor 
Eric and Samoa, and I don't care that you ever know that. I just want you to know there is places that have. You just want us to put like. Yeah, you just said it's yours. Um, and there is a push for Washington, D.C. to become a state. I don't know how big a push that is. Senate has 100 people, two per state. You know how long their terms are? Six years. And they are staggered. They are not all up for re election. All the members of the House are up for re election. In the Senate, in 2022, there will be 33 to 34 senators. Are running for election. There will be 33 to 34 that have two years to go, and there will be 33 to 34 that will have four years to go. So they're staggered. So only a third is up for re election. They are a continuous body. The House starts over every two years because they're all running for office. They don't know for sure that they're coming back. So start over every two years. Two-thirds of the senators are coming back, so they know they're coming back. They are called a continuous body. They do not start over. So only a third of them are up for election. When they first started the country, the rumor I heard was the first senators drew strong. A third of them got two-year terms. Your terms, and then as they added states, they just all were going to be up for your terms. Okay. okay, the Senate with six year terms, and the House with two year terms. How is the House closely linked, closer linked to the people than the Senate? Because there's still people re-elected every two years. The House is going to react to things more than the Senate is. <clears throat> yes. yes. The House. Um, the House is because it's every two years, and they have to keep they have to keep reacting to the people quicker than the Senate does because they're only six-year terms. Plus, who do, who do House members represent? The people of what? Just their district. Mm -hmm. like, especially a state like Texas. Our representative from here to South Lake represents us. They don't represent West Texas or the Panhandle or Dallas. Who does the senator represent? The whole state. So they're not as... They're a lot more standoffish. They're almost like a more arrogant group. But the House represents their district, a specific group of people. The Senate represents the entire state. Now, Wyoming, that doesn't make a difference because there's one representative for the whole state and two senators. But Texas, that makes a big deal. Representing Texas, is a lot bigger deal than representing one little district. We only got a couple more here. Actually, three more. Let's see. Um, Congress is the only part of our government that has the power to spend money. Congress writes the checks. The president doesn't write the checks. President can spend money, but can only spend money given to it by Congress. Now, um, Congress passes a law, passes a program, and tells the president, here's what you're going to go do. The president's agencies, all the little executive uh, departments, carry out all those laws. They can kind of decide how those laws get carried out or how those programs get carried out, but Congress is responsible for paying for it. And the president can't spend money that Congress doesn't give to him. 
Congress is not allowed to withhold or cut salaries if they don't like what you do. They can't tell the president, we're not paying you because we don't like what you're doing. They can't tell the judge, we're not paying you, we're cutting your salary because you're not doing what we like. So they, they can't cut salaries of government officials. They don't like what they're doing. So they can't withhold your salary. It would be tough with President Trump, he didn't take a salary. He took a dollar because he had to take something. You cut your salary. Okay, go ahead. I think it should be taking me out, but you know. And this last one. Almost all presidential powers are dependent on Congress. The president has to get Congress's permission for almost everything they do. The people they pick to fill the cabinet, Congress gets to okay them or say no. The judges they pick, Congress gets to say okay or no. The things the president wants to do, Congress gets to say yes or no. Which means supposedly the people have power over. Congress pays attention. They're the bad guy in the movie. When the guy starts figuring things out. Hey, wait a minute. You know, they put the little thing up and go back to hypnotize. Hey, hey, wait a minute. You hold the shiny object. You know, we go for it. Bright, bright lights and candy. So That's true. Yes. Yeah, bright lights and candy. They just throw that out there. Oh. Awesome. I put liberal and conservative there. Yeah. <laughs> President Obama was very liberal. So, what kind of judges would President Obama pick? Liberal. What kind of people would he pick for his cabinet? Liberal. Um, that's the consequence of elections. What's, we've never gotten along in this country. We used to have duels in the 1800s. We had a civil war where 600,000 people died in the 1800s. We've never gotten along. But it does seem like in recent years we've gotten worse about President Obama picks somebody to be a, just, a justice on the Supreme Court and the only concern is Congress is, no, they're liberal. No kidding, they're liberal. It's not my job to say I don't like what this person does. It's my job to say, hmm, can they do this job? Are they qualified? Do they have any skeletons in the closet? Yeah. Now, Sonia Sotomayor, who was a justice that was picked by President Obama, she's actually on tape saying, we legislate from the bench all the time. Which basically is saying, as judges, we re rewrite the laws all the time, which is unconstitutional. Well, that should have blocked her from being a justice. But the fact that she's liberal, no kidding. President Bush picked a, a Roman Catholic be on the Supreme Court, and guess what? He was anti-abortion. No kidding? Really? That's weird. A Roman Catholic that doesn't like abortion? That's strange. The weird thing is Pelosi and, and Biden, supposedly Catholics, they say abortion's okay. That's what I don't get. That doesn't make sense to me. You know? You gotta pick and choose, yeah. I like this part of the Bible, but not this part. I'm gonna keep this part. Let me go back to the duels. Hold on. I want, I want three, I don't know how to word it, I want, even for a while, you can extend it to, but all we always said for world leaders, for conflicts in the world, we need a three-pronged conflict. A physical challenge, a mental challenge, and then kick out of the bag. Out of the bag. So like, the President Trump and Kim Jong-un would have had to run a quarter against each other. They would have to do some sort of trivia game against each other. <laughs> Then we're all out of the bag and then see who wins. Game show. Well, you would. You televise it. You would raise money to feed people that didn't have food. I would. And we'd, we'd yeah. less so people dying. I know. I would pick that. That would be uh, awesome. If you had to draw just anything, like, it could be like, well, I'm one monopoly. Who wins? Well, but I, I, want, I want multiple. I want more than one thing. 
I always want physical. I want because physical decides how bad you want it. And then the mental, see how. And then the uh, out of the bag could be who knows. Whittle. So the Trump would win the running. Yeah. I don't like anything about it. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, he would not win any race. No. <laughs> He's like 30 something, but there's no way he would win any race at all. Yeah, yeah. he's not going to blow up. Do you know why we're going to What? Do you know why we're going to Yeah, I don't know. They're going to have more like a woman. His sister's the most evil person in the world. She's the crappiest one. Of all Apparently, time. she's worse. Huh? Like, yeah. She might be more power if she does. Yeah. They, they killed everybody else. They he spent his time killing people. They fought and not really messing with all the other races. He had some good brothers. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Ye